Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee with Lisa. I'm spiritual coach Lisa Hopp. It is Sunday, May 3rd, 2020. We have made it till May. Did it seem like it took us five years? <laughs> I'd like to join all of you for joining me who are new. Please check out my website at lisahopp.com. That's L-I-S-A-H-O-P-P.com. And for all of you who keep coming back every week and for your wonderful feedback, thank you so much. I appreciate you. I tell you every week and I mean it every week more and more. I'm just very, very happy to be able to do this and to have people that want to listen. Um, And so I appreciate you very, very much. So this week's topic as many of you know who have listened to all the podcast, I come up with it last minute. I can, like any writer, and I am an author of a couple books, you can't force a topic. You can't force what to write about or what to talk about. It has to come to me naturally, organically. And it did over the last couple of days as I watched on media all about the protests happening around the country. I'm, as some of you know, here in New Jersey. And there was a little one um, in our our state capital. Um, But more so the news, I think, covered more the ones in Michigan and California and such. So there's a point to me bringing this up. It's a I have a topic to speak about, but I want to go from point or step A to B to C to get there. I want to share with you my thought process that brought me to this week's topic, because this week's topic aren't the riots. It's just my thoughts, my thought form. Okay, so stay with me, (laughs) because I'm not, during this particular podcast, trying to bring up a debate about whether protests are right or wrong. Here's what was noticed about the the protest. I noticed it immediately from the coverage. And it was neutral coverage. Predominantly, the protesters were white or Caucasian. And in some of the larger cities... They chose to wear riot gear and to brandish guns and to scream at law enforcement, to storm a capital, to try and, and intimidate. Which to, so far, to no degree caused any progress, but it's what they chose to do. They were up for a fight. And to me, Personally, I didn't understand the need to protest that particular way. I thought it was a bit nonsensical, but they chose to do that and they would say they have the right to do that. And of course, we have a right to our voice. Um, We always have had a right to protest when we see an injustice. And there's many who would question if there's injustice going on as far as our governors who are asking us to, or ordering us to stay home if, you know, if that is something that is justified or unjustified. But it's not about the protests. It was rightly noted, and I felt it too, so I don't mind talking about it. It was rightly noted that If someone of a different race had shown up with riot gear, with guns, it would have been a completely different turnout. The police would definitely not have stood there and been screamed at or intimidated. Um, And there would have been a lot of arrests and perhaps even death. And that's injustice. That's not right. There is still a systematic racism in our country. And the virus that we're going through more greatly impacts 
those of other races than it does the white population. Yet it seems that they knew better not to show up that way. (laughs) At least most, you know, because they know it's different for them. And that's sad. At the same time of a major protest with protesters wearing riot gear and brandishing guns, a man was jogging, a black man was jogging and got killed by an off-duty police officer. He was jogging. There is definitely a difference in this country and I know in other places in the world as well. There's different classes, there's different rules and there shouldn't be. So I started to think about that and how we are now in 2020. We are now in a time of evolving to a higher energy in our world. And being someone who has experienced heaven, I know that racism does not exist in heaven. I know that inequality in any form does not exist there. There is no lower energy such as worry and hate, anxiousness. And I mean base physical feelings. There's no class system in heaven. There's no struggle. There's no hate. Heaven cannot hold hate. It only has a higher energy that many of you would call love. I call it love too. And it's immeasurable love. It's acceptance. It's adoration. And no matter what you think about your neighbor or what you think about an immigrant, they're equally loved. Just like you. They're looked at the same in heaven. And that wonderful energy is making its way to earth. But before it can, all these base, lower energies have to clear out. And we've had cycles, by the way, on our earth, because this whole transition started decades ago of that higher energy coming to earth. I'm too young to appreciate the 60s. I'm actually appreciating them now. Um, with the music and the clothes and the experiences. and But that was a time, the 60s, when we were trying to also move into a time of heaven coming to earth. And I think it was the birthing time. It was the beginning. So that's why you hear songs about the age of Aquarius We're still heading today into the age of Aquarius. And during that time, there was, there were people fighting for justice, fighting for peace or protesting for peace. There were people, I mean, who were actually at the 50th anniversary of Kent State. It wasn't racial on that day before students were killed unnecessarily for protesting by the National Guard in Kent Kent State, Ohio. And we can't acknowledge it fully because of the times we're in, but it is a, it is that time. It was this week, the 50th anniversary. And so it was a very, uh, very much a time of upheaval. And I, my sense is this time it's going to be different. We won't go into after this age at Disco Age. <laughs> Nothing wrong with Disco. Love the Bee Gees. All right. <clears throat> but I think the 70s are the result 
of the weariness of the 60s. And now we're in the 21st century. And this time, isn't it teaching us what we want to live with and what we don't want to live with? And I can honestly say that I know that a lot of people watching what they saw on TV don't want to live with that anymore. And my personal opinion, rightfully so. Why do you want to take up arms against another? Whether your opinion is based on fact or not, you always have a right to say it. And you don't have to go to such extremes. So anyway, back to my topic. Hmm. (laughs) When I saw this different forms of handling a situation for different people. It caused me to focus on the evil that is racism. The evil disease that is racism. And it is my last step to going on to my topic So stay with me. Many people who are racist don't think they are. Racism is programmed into us. It is not something we're born with because heaven doesn't have it. So you don't get it programmed into you and then you're sent here ready to hate your fellow man. And many of you listening to this would say, Oh, I don't hate them. I just want them to not do this or not do that. Or I want everyone to work hard for their money. I don't want anyone to have a handout. I don't like this. I don't like that. Okay. It's still racism. And so, babies that are born, they don't see color. They may see it. My son did. My son would say, yes, that's a... When he was very, very young, I would say, "Um, who is that? Is that your friend? Yes. And he would note he had a different color. He he would say, um, and the, the boy's mother laughed. At this, he he said that um, he would think of uh, children other colors as like having more chocolate skin, but he didn't see them as he saw the different skin color, but he didn't see them as different. Otherwise, he didn't, and many children don't see any color at all. He just saw him as someone who had different skin, and in every other way, they were alike. That was his special friend. He loved him. He loved to play with him. He didn't think of himself as really different from him. He was innocent. There was no underlying. It was his way of describing him so that we knew who he was talking about. And I remember when he said that. Um... I looked at the mother because I was like, oh gosh, I hope she doesn't take him wrong. And she didn't. She laughed and she said, yeah, he does. He has chocolate skin, my son. And my son thought he had vanilla skin because he loved ice cream. (laughs) Right? (laughs) But there was no growth to hate. There was no There was no growth to racism from that moment. It was two four-year-olds acknowledging each other. And so racism is taught. It is programmed. 
and it's programmed in us before we can talk. It is programmed in by our towns, by our schools, if we have a teacher who has a belief system. It is programmed in perhaps by the friends we keep. It is programmed in by our families. It is programmed in perhaps by the news if we watch it very young. But many times we just believe. We just believe in something and not realize that that's not inherently who we are. And many of you watching have this programming. It was given to me. I just made a point with myself to make sure that I grew out of it. That I see it. It still pops up from time to time. And I go, oh, that's my programming. That's not truth. That's not reality. It doesn't pop up very much. but And it's very small. But it can. And I always say no to it. It's an internal work that I do. I know better. And so, why do I bring this up today when you've, when you've tuned in to be inspired and to feel better? <laughs> because while racism is a great evil, and a disease that is programmed into you very young. There are many other beliefs that you have that are literally affecting your life. Because you may not think that your beliefs affect your life, but they do. And the title of this podcast is What Goes Out Has to Come Back. So when you put out your preconceived beliefs about something without having evidence to back it up, you're going to get it back. And it will most likely negatively impact your life. For instance, if If you believe, and I want to find my words carefully, 18 minutes in, (laughs) after bringing up such a fiery topic, (laughs) if you believe that someone is stealing from the system, And you have a mindset of that because maybe once you heard of it or maybe once it affected somebody. Then most likely in some way it's happening to you. For instance, I heard someone say once, I have people coming into my home and stealing from me. Someone stole money from us. Someone stole money from us. And then on social media, This person's always posting about how people are ripping the system off or the country should be shut down, our borders should be shut down. We shouldn't buy products from certain countries. What they don't realize is is when their consistent belief is that somehow people are coming here and taking things from the country which ties into taking things from them that someone's going to feel that vibration and come into your environment and take from you because you're only getting back what you put out. I 
I read this quite often, this true statement, and it says, If you only understood how powerful your thoughts were, you'd never have a negative thought again. It is so very true, but it's not just thoughts. It's beliefs. They're just as strong as they're embedded. They're at the core of you and the core of me and feelings. So when you worry about jobs being taken from people, watch your job area. Something's probably not going to come through. You get back what you expect. And when you put out thoughts and beliefs, even if occasionally something happens that tells you you're correct, which, again, what you expect, you get. So what is best to do, what is 100% best to do, is to focus on what you want in your environment. You can know that there may be injustices in this world. There may be things going on that you won't like and don't like. But the more you can focus on attracting to yourself only that which you want, you'll see more and more of it coming into you. There are people in the early part of this virus shutdown that decided to ignore precautions and gather. They basically said, bring it on. And then it came. And some of them passed. They said with their vibration, in spoken word, in feeling and belief, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to go to church. I'm going to assemble wherever I want to assemble. I'm going to let it in. And it happened. And so... We have to make sure that what we are feeling, what we are thinking, what we are believing is the world we want to live in. What we are believing. It's about perception too. It's about perception. I understand that there are some right now that have yet to get their unemployment. That cannot work because they're not essential. I know also there are some that are considered essential. I don't think they are and are scared. I understand. However, be very careful that you're not focusing just on what you feel is going wrong around you. Because you will get more of that. The more you look for the money, the longer the money will take to arrive because you're focusing on lack. Focus on feeling abundant. Stay with me. We can feel gratitude and abundance as we get in the food bank line. We can feel gratitude and abundance as we make the call to get help with stalling on making payments. 
And yes, it will be difficult. And I'm not flip about it. But the more that you can pull off gratitude and feeling abundant and powerful, the quicker the help will arrive. It, I'm not saying it's your fault. And every week I say this. I'm not saying it's your fault. We have programming that was given to us that we've absorbed. We live our lives a lot on autopilot. We're not aware of our own power. Today I'm telling you again how much power you have to create the life that you really want. The life with financial freedom, the life with health, the life with good relationships. And I know, I know that some of you are tied up in a house with all your family and you love them tremendously but each day it's a struggle because there's no breaks go inside with your power of your mind and your spirit and think about how you want to feel <clears throat> think about what you're going to do after. Focus on what makes you feel good. Even if you feel it's daydreamy, it still is it's much better than focusing on what's going wrong and what isn't right. Try not to live in fear because fear is really based in lack of control and that feeling that you're powerless and in no moment, not one moment in your life are you powerless. There's always a power of how to feel, how to act what to believe you're always powerful and what you focus on expands so if you focus on hate it expands around you if you focus on love it expands around you believe it or not if you focus on love more than injustice if you focus on speaking up for what you feel is right, but doing it in a peaceful, compromising manner, you will get more working on your behalf than the other way. Things that are forced never work out, never go the way they, they, they usually end up nowhere. These protesters that looked like they were ready for a fight, they're not getting their way. Because they're forcing and trying to intimidate their way. And good love and positive people aren't going to have any part in that. And so, be who you truly are. Be the powerful, creative, manifesting giant that you are. Even at this moment, when you're waiting to go back to work, when the money has run out, take a moment, as hard as it is, take a moment, center yourself, and find that survivor. Find that powerful person. Find that creation in you. The creative spark. That will tell you what to do. Find that divine link. That will tell you what to do. To make it through this time. And then I bet you the next second. The next few minutes. A hotline may appear. A person may come to your door. An idea might arise. 
Go into your greatest part. Go into that core within you that is linked directly to heaven because we all walk around with it. We're not all bones and organs and skin. Within us is a higher spark, a soul that is has direct hotline to heaven. Go into that core. Pick up that phone to that hotline and ask them for help. Don't pray loudly. Get angry. Feel rage. Just pick up the hotline and ask for help. And then trust it's yours because it is yours. And know deep within yourself that you can get through this because most of us will. And please stay away from the negative. conspiracy theory stuff that's now going around that is being promoted by people who are stuck at home (laughs) right I'm not laughing at them I had a little chuckle over how I put it focus your power on promoting within yourself your good belief system, your manifestation abilities, your feelings of love. Be helpful to your neighbor. Do something kind, whether to yourself or another. Focus on feeling good, feeling abundant, feeling healthy, feeling happy. If you can focus on feeling good within then good will come to you from the environment. Because what you put out has to come back. If you see injustice, you get injustice. And I mean if you focus on it, if you're stewing on it, you're just going to get that back. If you stew on what isn't in your hands right now, It will continue to stay away from you because you're focused on the fact that it's missing. Focus on gratitude for what you have. Even if it's your own health while others around you don't have it. Whatever you can in a small way pick up, focus on that. And then when you go to thoughts, that say that things are not evenly divided, that there's others around you that take away from what is yours. All those thoughts that were given to you, all those beliefs that were given to you, because if you're listening to me, you're a good, wonderful person. Or you wouldn't be listening So when you have those thoughts, I want you to remember this. God, Divine Source, Yahweh, Allah, however you may know, that Divine, Most High Source, God loves us all equally. The same, massively, immeasurably. It's almost like an in love with us. And that person that you think is a loser, God loves them the same. There is nothing that they can do or you can do to take that away. That's so important to keep in mind. 
tell yourself that when you go to that place where you see them as different or less, there is an energy that loves you the same as them and them the same as you. You are no better, no different, no greater than any other living person on this planet. No matter how they act, no matter who they are. And think about that before you go to react or take action. Because it may change something. And if you think about it here now, you won't have to think about it when you do get to join that energy later. It won't have to be in your review. And when you put out that love and that understanding, because heaven wants us to love each other as heaven loves us. And so when you put that out, you get it back. And sometimes it will be harder. But whatever you can do to put out love, to put out understanding, to put out, maybe I don't know what their story is. I'm not going to assume. You will get back love, understanding, help, acceptance back. And sometimes even ten times over. It is so worth it. So worth it. It'll make you happier. It'll make you more abundant. It'll solve some of your problems for you. Think about it. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that some of this connected for you. And have a wonderful week. And remember to try and be grateful somehow, some way. Many blessings to you. Until next time.